Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have four stories for you this week. The first one is the Ravens and Bengals game was altered due to a drone. I'm sure you heard about that one. Uh, FA safety is changing the way you log in. We have rumors of a new DJI Agress T60. Skybrass releases a 2D mapping uh, software. And then lastly, we have our Black Friday sale. So let's get to it. All right, and before we get started, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving yesterday. I'm certainly very thankful for all of you that come here every week, watch this segment, and then also engage in the comments. Uh, what started as a way for me to help our students stay informed with the industry has grown into a video that, well, many of you actually tell me about when they meet me uh, in person at uh, in-person events. And uh, this has grown to a video that's watched by more than 20,000 people now every week. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud of this and I'm really uh, excited to uh, continue doing this. Now, I do love the discussion that ensue in the comments every week. And uh, while many of you say that your favorite part of the Friday morning is just to watch the video, well, my favorite part is actually to wake up and read the comments and interact with uh, all of you. So uh, that's it. Let's move on to the first segment this week, which is uh, another drone over a major sporting event. A major league football game was halted this week due to a drone that was flying over the stadium and busting the stadium TFR. And while I would normally say, don't be that guy. I'm still going to say it, don't be that guy. Uh, this keeps bringing deeper issues that I think need to be brought up. And the first one is that, quite frankly, there's just not enough notification for these TFRs. Now, bear with me here. I'm not trying to excuse the behavior of this person. I think it was still something that wasn't the smartest. But if you watch our live event on Monday, you've heard my opinion on this. Uh, there's a, a single NOTAM that is issued. A NOTAM is a notice to air mission for all of the stadium VFRs in the country once a year, actually. I don't even know if it's updated every year, but this means that the stadium VFR doesn't really show on your favorite app, such as before you fly or aloft air control. Uh, and, and no, that's not really a problem from the lens provider if you think that's, that's what the issue is. The reality is that uh, these are not issued individually as a TFR. They're issued as a whole, as a blanket. This is my team's job, my, my, my full-time job. And personally, I don't follow major sporting events. The Major League Football game, I don't know when the games are. I don't actually see the TFR being charted. So that means that I could potentially bust one of these TFRs because, like I said, I don't follow these major sporting events. Um, if I'm two or three miles away from a stadium, these TFRs are three miles wide. If I'm three miles away from this stadium doing a commercial job, how am I supposed to know that there's actually a TFR in place other than knowing that there's this one NOTAM and maybe knowing that there is actually an event going on at that specific time. Now, again, like I said, don't get me wrong, flying a drone over a large amount of people is a terrible idea, TFR or not. Uh, but over the years, I've been questioning more and more the intent of this stadium TFR, uh, especially when it comes to uh, covering only certain events, uh, a concert from a a popular artist uh, would fill up as many seats, if not more than that, than one of these qualifying sporting events that has a TFR right now. And yet we don't issue a TFR for that. So why be so selective? So uh, I'm going to say that loud, quite frankly, uh, is the TFR really protecting the broadcasting right from the NFL and the MLB and NASCAR? Or is it actually designed for safety purposes? And I'm going to say the Second one is probably not the answer. Uh, on top of all this, the second issue at play here is that we need better education for drone pilots at the point of sale, at the point of sale. Uh, the FAA actually requires that manufacturers include a brochure with each of the drones that they sell in the US. The problem is the rule is not being enforced. I'm not even sure that manufacturers know it's a requirement. Uh, we'll put a link down in the description to that document that's supposed to be included, but uh, could the person that flew over the game actually have been better informed? Yeah. More than likely, probably. So yes, don't be that guy, but you know what? I think we have as an industry a long ways to go to help people get better educated, starting with telling them when they buy a drone of the things that they can and can do, should and shouldn't do. And uh, that's it. I'm going to get off my soapbox. Uh, make sure you check your local sporting team before you fly near a stadium uh, within three miles. All right, next up this week is an update to the FAA safety login process for uh, non-governmental employees. That, that's you watching, most of you. Some of you are government employees, but uh, the FAA is going away from using a username and a password, and they're transitioning to the multi-factor authentication service. Uh, the process is 
pretty easy, yeah, kind of. Uh, it takes about five minutes to change the information over. Uh, after you set up with your new login, you'll need to use, uh, you, you won't be able to use your uh, credentials, but up until November 30th of this year, a few more days, uh, you'll use your old credential. Uh, there doesn't appear to be any more changes to FAA Safety. Uh, by the way, if you're wondering why I'm talking about this, FAA Safety is the website where you're gonna be doing your recurrent training, uh, ALC 677, that's the name of the uh, the course that you have to take every two years. It's also a great place to find additional information about drones. We actually have quite a few courses in there for free that you can take uh, for drone pilots and airplane pilots that are gonna help you uh, with, uh, I'm gonna call it continuing education. So uh, make sure that you head over, make sure you create that new account and uh, make sure next time you log in to remember how that actually all worked. All right, your third story this week is a new one, a new and larger Agress, uh, the shared image from a DJI leaker named Igor Bogdanov uh, shows that there is a new Agress to be released, hopefully yesterday as you're watching this. It's called a T60, which would have a 60 liter uh, liquid spray capacity. Uh, the other specs are not really super available, but the T40 had a 50 kilogram dry payload. Uh, so it's reasonable to expect that the T60 will be more than that. Uh, the T60 is also likely to have onboard RTK camera and then a light that's similar to the T40. So we'll cover this again if we find that the drone was released and if we get more specs. And then your final story this week is SkyBras, our friends in, at SkyBras in Texas. They released a free 2D mapping. Uh, as uh, with the other SkyBras product, their mapping is using uh, videos instead of pictures to create the models. Uh, you may already be familiar with the SkyBras 3D mapping, which includes an app to fly the drone, a 2D and 3D model processing in about five minutes. It's extremely fast. And now it's actually free. So make sure you go and try the product and uh, well, tell us and tell them what you think about uh, this new offering. And before we go, it is Black Friday. So our Black Friday sale is in full swing. Uh, our entire catalog of courses is currently on sale. Uh, you'll never see your price as low until next year when we do it again, but uh, up to 50% off. Uh, this is, uh, you'll be able to find courses like part 107 for $107, which is a, a major discount. Uh, can't go wrong with that one. We also just released a brand new course uh, called part 107 waivers made easy. So we're helping you submit your part 107 waivers, getting the application ready, Ready. a ton of information in there, extremely helpful information. So if you struggle with part 107, if you want to fly uh, beyond visual line of sight, fly over people uh, using a waiver, then uh, this, uh, this is a way to do it. And uh, we'll show you how to do all of that. And that's it. That's all I have for you this week. We'll see you on Monday for the live event. We may even have a special guest. Uh, we'll see if they want to be on the video or not. And uh, yeah. Have a great rest of your extended weekend. Uh, have uh, a good food coma from yesterday and we'll see you on Monday. Welcome to the very first edition of this video series. What I wanna do with this is I want to introduce some of the UAS news that happen every week. And on Fridays, basically create a video and tell you guys about everything that's new in the drone industry. <laughs>